Hey, this is Jess Sager, and you're listening to Pizza Beer Revolution. Hit it! Huh? Yeah. Pizza Beer Revolution. Now tell me something good. What's up, everybody? Pizza Beer Revolution, Mike Polano, Joe Maffei, Derek D, and sitting in comedian extraordinaire, I'd like to say, Jess oh, Sager. Thank Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you for having me, and thank you for feeding me. This is That's amazing. what we do here. It's Pizza Beer Revolution, right? Pizza yeah. Beer gets you in a room. It's really all about the revolution. We like to feed our guests. <laughs> yeah. Did That's you say the way to get people on your side in a revolution, is to oh, just totally. feed them. Did you say extraordinaris? I did. I was just going to say. It's an dro- awesome word. I, dro- yeah, I think I said really extraordinaire, cool. but I have a speech impediment. So it came out like <laughs> extraordinaris, but I'll take credit for it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Right, I dig it. it. Sometimes it works for you. <laughs> how was it? How was the how was the drive down? Not bad. Uh, not bad. Uh, I almost got killed only twice, which is like an improvement. Do you normally get killed multiple <laughs> times on the way down? Almost get killed. Right. Sorry. I left yeah. Speech impediment. Uh, well, no, it's just if I got killed, then this would be a much different podcast. <laughs> Completely different. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I, uh, I have bad eyesight, and there are other people who just are shitty drivers. There are I a lot of shitty I drivers. won't take accountability for being a shitty driver myself. Everybody else is shitty. <laughs> it has nothing to I'm do with you. I'm just blind. Do you have a car? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what do you drive? We'd like to talk about that on PBR. Oh, I have a <laughs> Hyundai Sonata. Okay. So. We like to, we like, I w- I'm always so interested in what people come down and why. It, it's an interesting question. Why not? I mean, cars are cool. People all drive cars, and I host a show about them. <laughs> it's true. It's called Fast Lane Daily. <laughs> Where'd nice. you come from? Uh, uh, Jersey City. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, the path thing, which we're going to get to later. Oh, right? God. <laughs> <get> oh, God. <laughs> After path. I. <laughs> Let's not start off on the wrong foot. Okay. After path. <laughs> right? I've never... <laughs> I've never had such a seething hatred for anything. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we all share it. Path train. We I'm all on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who was on our show? I think it was Casey, uh, Casey Jost, who said he watched somebody eat something off the floor of the path train. He's, yeah, he did. He's like, wow, I just watched that five year old kid get AIDS. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, okay. Terrible. What, can- let's talk a little bit about your obsession, as my obsession for The Walking Dead, oh, and how much I God. hate uh, Carl. What? He's he's awful in. In the comics, he's, he's not awful. Yeah. In the comics, he's a badass. Well, they made him suck on television. Uh, yeah, no on the show, he's about. fucking dreadful. Just know, like, all you need to know is, like, Carl is the worst, and he, like, <laughs> his role in the zombie apocalypse is to not follow instructions and just eat pudding. That's all he does. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That's he, it. Yeah. He's a real, he's not a zombie. He's a, he no, kills he's a person. He's yeah. a kid. He's but like it, a teenager. He's a shithead. Yeah. Oh. You think he's going to shoot himself in the eye? Well, how does he lose it in uh, the comics? Spoiler alert. It's like an accidental misfire type of thing. Yeah, it, it's not deliberate. That, yeah. But um, how do you shoot know. yourself in the eye, man, I don't, and live? Yeah, like well, uh, I don't I, know. It's a comic. Like, because they've strayed from the comics enough. So much. So much. Um, Hence Daryl. And like Rick's hand. Yeah, exactly. There's, Rick's got both arms. Yeah. yeah. Oh, in, in the comic. He yeah, does in right. the comics. Yeah, he loses one. So um. I don't know. I hope they shoot his eye out because I, I just hate him so much. I just want him to be <laughs> debilitating pain. Do you think we're going to get to meet Negan and we're going to get to kill Glenn with a baseball bat? I think I think they're probably going to do Negan at like the finale. Okay. I, that's what I'm thinking. Right. Oh, so Glenn dies in the finale is what you're saying? Is this the last know. season or something? No, but no, the comics no. are ahead of the show. Yeah. So. yeah. You read the comics? I don't. Oh. I, I, I cheat online. Like, I'll go on and I'll look. There's some really good websites out there that have it, everything. Yeah, it has its own, like, wikia. Yeah, that's yeah. where I go. Yeah. And it shows every, you who dies in the episode. That's crazy. Like, every yeah. show does now. Like, Game of Thrones. So you yeah. Look at that stuff. It's crazy. Well, because, like, for some of for some shows, that there's, like, so much going on that, like, if you want to start, like, midway through, you know, sometimes yeah. you have no choice. You can't follow it, you know, if you're rushing through it. Yeah. But. You're going to need it for Game of Thrones. I mean, you can't watch that show without some kind of companion thing. It's yeah, so complicated. Game, yeah, so complicated. So it's, it's ha- the first few episodes of House of Cards, you're like, all right, there's a lot to take in, and then you get into it. But yeah, yeah. That's, you're, you're, ha- Game of Thrones is definitely like Westeros, with the, I don't know what's going like, on, Cersei, all these names. Are you watching House of Cards this season? Yeah, but I'm only three episodes in. I hear the product placement and advertising is revolutionary in the show now. That it's oh, constantly now that you said product that, shots and advertising oh, really? in it. It's now like that you said that, I'm going to look out for that. Yeah, I f- we uh, my boyfriend and I watched it like a couple like last weekend because we were both sick, so we just did the whole thing like through. first season. You binged it, uh, just the third season because oh, we had, yeah, we'd seen yeah. the okay. first two already. But uh, I didn't notice that. But I'm like, if I 
I wasn't looking for it, right. you know, but I'm sure if I went back, I would. That's what people are saying. I like would, they, they, they took advertising to so a you, new level. You probably subliminally, subliminally saw it. Yeah. And I probably went out and like bought a bunch of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I have all this new Apple product. I was like, guys, I need to be Claire Underwood. I need to be her. I don't get, all right. So I'm not, I didn't mean to change the subject, but I'm not, I'm, I'm only two episodes in and the one he's, he's like crying by his desk and then she just walks in after running and just. Starts banging him. Yeah, I don't know how that would like logistically happen. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "Why are you crying, Mr. President?" I, I, I get, I guess, because he's, you know, but, but like, I don't, I didn't think that would work. Yeah, yeah. you know, like just physiologically speaking, I didn't see how that would be a thing <laughs> that was successful. Yeah, but good for her if she can do it. You like, know? It, it, yeah. Which if part? anyone can do because it, it's Claire Underwood. Because you know? she huh. ran. No, because like he was like on the floor crying, and then yeah. she like almost raped him. Just oh. laid him down and zipped his pants. She yeah. pulled her know. sweaty pants down. I don't watch. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was like, I was making leaping assumptions, but she oh, yeah. like he's like on the floor crying and like hyperventilating, and she just like gets on the floor and starts banging him. Okay. And uh, good for him. She's riding him like a like a crazed bronco. That's all you gotta do is lay on the floor and cry. I've been doing it wrong for all these years. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It doesn't saying. work for me. <laughs> it was, it was very strange. Like so, I can't picture that working correctly yeah, in real life. Yeah, yeah, right. you know? So when you're not watching pornographic stuff off of Netflix, <laughs> you're you're a stand-up comedian. Yes. Right. How's that? How how long have you been doing that now? Uh, about three years, off okay. and on. Um, I took some time off after because uh, I was traveling for a while, and then. I got back into it, and then I took some more time off because I'm lazy, and then I got back into it. That's off and on. Yeah. That, that's what often, that's a good definition of off and on. Yeah. <laughs> what, what drove you to, uh, to make that leap and get up there the first time? Um, I was actually, I was, I was called for jury duty. That'll lead you right to stand-up comedy <laughs> and, every yeah. time. It lends itself. Like, well, because like, uh, they were doing the voir dire process, is, and that's like when, you know, they ask you a bunch of questions, you have to stand up in front of all these strangers and tell them about yourself and like I was just being a dick because I just didn't want to fucking do jury duty yeah. so oh, I was being honest I was under oath but I was just also being an asshole yeah. um, <laughs> and like they all loved me like I made everybody laugh and they ended up picking me and I was like god this fucking backfired <laughs> This backfired so bad. Yeah, they ask you. They ask you some serious questions, and you know you're supposed. There's magic words to get out of it. Come on, Jess. But like, I di I also I didn't want to lie. I didn't want to lie. Oh. So I was just like a dick. You know, <laughs> I was like you were a truthful asshole. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> they asked. One of the questions was like, uh, um, "Do you know? Is anyone related to you with like a criminal record?" And uh, I don't want to say who it is, but there is someone I'm related to with a criminal record, right. and they're like. Uh, they're like, oh, is that going to affect your, whatever, your opinions on the case? And I was like, throw the bitch in jail. I don't care. I hate her. And they just like, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. Now for now for the edit of the show, can you just repeat after me? Mom? <laughs> Dad? <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> like as, as homicidal as my mom can sometimes be, it actually wasn't her, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I was like, I don't know. It was, it was. Very strange. And like yeah. one of the questions they ask, which, and they actually did this in House of Cards too, in one scene. They ask if you have any bumper stickers oh. Oh, on nice. your car. Um, because that implies that like you have a very strong opinion on Yeah, something. if you're going to stick yeah, in your that's car, true, yeah. man. That's true. Because I ain't putting any sticker on my Never. car. Never. Yeah, dude. Zero chance. Not even one with a VIN number of two. No way. Right? No way. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, because like they that was one of the questions. I was like, at the time, I drove like an Oldsmobile Achieva, which like I don't know if you guys are familiar. Do you know the Achieva? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like slightly better than walking wherever you're going on broken glass. <laughs> right, you know, it's yeah. just like the worst. I was like, I was like, guys, like, I was like, I'm not gonna make this car any uglier than it needs to be. It was just awful. what a name for a company, Oldsmobile, because it was literally just old people driving Oldsmobiles. Yeah, that's the thing. I never got pulled over once in that car because everyone just assumed like if I fucked up, they're just like, she's probably a hundred. Leave yeah, her alone. Yeah, yeah. You know? I had a, she's like, gonna yeah. die soon. Just let Olds her go. People driving around Oldsmobiles. I loved my Olds. Cumberland I had the Cutlass Supreme, and I loved it. Bench seating. There's nothing better than bench. That the the, the seats old in that car ones, were super comfortable, yeah. but like everything else was wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. It also <laughs> smelled really good, but there was like everything else was wrong with this <laughs> fucking car. Like it leaked water on the inside. So like and like we did. Like my dad is an engineer, so he and I like. We got together to try to fucking figure this thing out. 
We took it to mechanics. Like no one, like we put smoke bombs in it to see like where the stuff was coming from. Nothing. It was just like there would be pools of water <laughs> on the bottom of the car. And That's like when it weird. first started happening, I was just like, I'm really clumsy. So I just assumed I spilled something and forgot. <laughs> But then it, it didn't kept, evaporate. No, <laughs> and then like in the winter, it would get really bad because like turn to ice. The, yeah, it would turn. To, it would like condense on my the inside of my windshield. So the inside and the outside of my windshield will just be like frozen. Oh man, maybe you guys it was, had it wrong. It might be a feature. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like a car designed did, for like mermaids or something. Did you ever figure it out? No, I like. I think in the time it would have taken to figure it out, I could have saved enough for like a rolls or something. You know. Ah, it's so crazy. It was unreal how fucked up this one vehicle was. And like we looked online and like apparently they're all just like that. Like it wasn't like my particular Oldsmobile Achieva. It's just so like a crazy the, design. Like, yeah, the description that is. And still leaks water. Yeah. Like, <laughs> did you guys ever have a car that had some kind of crazy malfunction to it that you could oh, yeah. never figure out? Well, it's funny. The first car I had was my grandma's car that she handed down to us. And it was a Buick. And when you got in the back seat, there were no handles to roll down the windows. Oh, wow. And I'm like, what's wrong with this? Where are the handles? How does this roll down? She's like, that was a feature of the car. They're called picture windows. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> picture windows. How strange That's is amazing. that? That's hysterical. No, I, I didn't really have uh, my first car. The interior was burgundy. That's pretty, though. <laughs> it is. It really yeah. goes with your 88 eyes. 88 Toyota Camry. <laughs> Why'd you look at me like my that when you said My first car was Burger? a Camry. My first car was a 92 Camry. Oh, it was 88. You yeah. went from the Camry to that Oldsmobile Achieva? Well, what was it called? The well, Achieva? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. What happened was um, my Camry, that was like my first car. It was like my mom's and she gave it to me. But um, the air conditioning went. So the like Kelly Blue Book value of the car was less than it would take to fix the yeah. AC. So, and like... When you're a girl and you drive around with your windows open, like sometimes oh. people think you're more friendly than you actually are. <laughs> you know, like when yeah. you're stuck in like bumper to bumper traffic and no one's moving, like people want to start conversations with you. <laughs> and I have enough friends. I don't need that. You yeah, know? you don't know so, new friends on the road. Yeah. So I was like, let me get a car with air conditioning. And then I got an air, a car with air conditioning and like swimming. You got so, you yes. got a car with <laughs> air conditioning. So you didn't have to talk to people. Yeah. I love that about you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. That's I got to get rid of this car because the windows are down. People want to talk to me. That's bullshit. Yeah. Right. I mean, and with the windows down, how do you play that bad music that you don't want to, like, you're a little bit embarrassed Yeah, no, of? how am I going to listen to Aqua's Barbie Girl? Exactly, and jam <laughs> out Keep to it. Keep my self-respect. Um, so you it's still <laughs> already stuck in my head again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that you, guy looked uh, like Mr. Uh, Queen, yeah. too. It was amazing. Um, yeah. you, so you leave, you leave stand-up after a while, right? And then you decide to come back to it. Yeah, I left for a few months because I was a. Uh, I was actually I was in Japan for a while. Did you were you there with Derek shooting Coca Cola commercials? That was Taiwan uh, and Heineken. Sixty <laughs> percent. <laughs> I was there. Uh, I was there with my friend's band eating candy. Like, <laughs> was what? it drug laced candy? <laughs> no. Like, Damn. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I had always wanted to go to Japan because one day I fell down a Wikipedia rabbit hole and I discovered all these amazing varieties of Kit Kats that only exist in Japan. What? Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking insane. I wish I said it like, at the same time. To tell. <laughs> yeah, they, there's like the green tea ones, which are like super popular over there, are really good. They have red bean, they have like Gatorade, <laughs> white chocolate. Shocker they like, have green tea and red bean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but they also have like, Magic they have frog. like fruit punch, <laughs> pineapple, Wow. Oreo, strawberry, hazelnut. These are just Salmon. the ones that I found in like one Seven Eleven. These, These are, are all like unicorns. They all got the wafers in them though. Yeah. Same wafer. Yeah. yeah. Same shape. Um, I'm trying to think. They had other ones. They had wasabi, which yeah. was surprisingly good. Um, and I don't even like spicy stuff, but it was really good. Um, so, so I had always wanted to go to Japan just to like eat candy. And you did. <laughs> like I didn't How long care were you about there? I was there for like three weeks. That's a long trip. Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. <laughs> You're getting amazing. Yeah. You bought a car with air conditioning so you don't have to talk to people. And yes, then you went, to, went Japan to Japan because to you like candy. the candy. Yeah. Holy shit. I have very <laughs> strong motivations for That's everything. That's awesome. That I, <laughs> I love how you like found it on a, a Wikipedia page. And for Kit like, Kats. Yeah. It was, like, like, it was they're, they're so good. Walk me through how this happens. You're on the computer. Let's start. I, the like, I, have, open. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of downtime. Did you type in Kit Kat? Yes. A, oh, yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's what I did. You legit went to the computer. Typed in Wikipedia and and went to Kit Kat. Yeah, no, she was. You were specifically. 
It wasn't like, oh, oh, Kit Kat. Let me click this. It was like, I'm going to Wikipedia right now. It. I'm going to search Kit Kats. Well, you know, it was around the time when, like, I think it was like the white chocolate ones had just come out. So I uh. wanted to see if they were making any other ones. Yeah. And then I saw that, like, Japan fucking beat us to everything except nukes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty I, much. I, I, I <laughs> they do everything better than us. You don't know how much I respect you because I don't I think I was just talking about this the other day. I can't tell you how many times I pull up Google and have no or, or just Chrome my browser and have nowhere to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you had it in you to go I had, to, yeah, like with sugar, like there's always purpose for me. That's it. Like there's that's like my main Did Aunt Mary used to everything. get you those Kit Kats? <laughs> yeah. I do I have a I have a third thing now that now that amazes me. <laughs> I mean, air conditioning was the one. The Kit Kats Japan story is number two. And you have a goddamn necklace of Bill Clinton on your oh, neck right yeah. now. Yeah, you do. I love him. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, you know what? I couldn't tell from here until now that you said that. But I thought maybe it was like a loved one who passed away or something. But it's, it's, it's Bill, oh, Bill yeah, Clinton. It's, it's Bill Clinton. <laughs> That's amazing. Why do you wear Bill Clinton around your neck? Um, my uh, One of my good friends, she was getting everyone photo necklaces for <laughs> Christmas. And at the time, like... I was single and like, she was like, I didn't know who to put in it that you would love like forever, forever besides <laughs> Bill Clinton. So she gave me Bill Clinton because I always have like just been obsessed with Bill Clinton. Oh, okay. It wasn't just Not a random like, like I'll no, pick Bill like Clinton. I was, I was Monica Lewinsky for Halloween when I was in fifth grade. It was like, <laughs> awesome. what? It was, in, I got sent home from school. Like that they called my fantastic. parents and my mom was like, I know I sent her out like that. What's the problem? Like she didn't get it. So, so wait, you had that, she gave that to you and you were single. Yeah. And then you met Mike. Yeah. Mike, come over here one second. <laughs> come over here one second. Mike, Mike just happens to be here. Yeah. Right Mike now. is here right now. Like, all right. So Mike's walking over here. I want to like, I want to set the it's stage. It's not like a creepy. No, thing. I'm not saying that, but no, I want to, I need Mike. He's like here's, a father figure to me. He, Mike or Bill? Bill. Oh, okay, good. Cause Mike, that Mike being a father figure, that would be creepy. That would be weird. super But I'm kind of, I'm kind of setting it up right here. Like I'm, I'm saying you guys are in a bar and you got, you, Mike, you walk up to Jess <laughs> and you're talking, you're sharing a moment, and then you look down and you see <laughs> that she has a Bill Clinton pendant around her neck. Yeah, I didn't notice the pendant until after we already started dating. <laughs> really? Uh, right, so, so you notice it finally a couple days, weeks in? Someone pointed it out to me. They were like, like, did you notice that girl there has a Bill Clinton pendant? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, she is, huh? Well, yeah, and, and, and not to be too, but have you guys already been intimate at this point and you haven't noticed yet? I don't know when you notice it. When <laughs> uh, Lucas Connolly pointed it out to me. Oh, yeah, so that was probably after... Uh, I didn't was, meet him for a while. I don't think it was like that first time that like we hung out. Oh, so that was like super early. That was like our first date. It's pretty awesome though. That's yeah, I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> hilarious and it's cool. It's, it's true love. Patriotic. It's true love. It's, it's originals. <laughs> I just so, love so. America. Uh, not really anything. <laughs> and you yeah. stay together. It's yeah. well, I'm not, I don't consider myself a Democrat. I just love Bill Clinton. I don't like vote on party lines. I'm just like, who seems the least douchey? Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's so funny. Do None you play the them. sax? I wish. <laughs> I wish. Because, like, he did it and Lisa Simpson did. That, like, uh, everyone oh, yeah. I loved growing up did, but I just. Nope. It's a great instrument. Like, I, could, I could never, like, read music properly, so I could never, like, <laughs> do anything. That's a tough one to play. That's like, You got to have some nuts. Yeah, because it's like, you're right? not just mm -hmm. blowing. There's, like, buttons and everything. Yeah. And it's heavy. And it, I'm like, like, it's not. You know, you look at a saxophone, you just wish, like, okay, there's. Four buttons for this hand, four buttons. There's all these weird pipes and yeah. things, and like I, I don't get what's going on. There. Yeah, like, and I love I, it though. Yeah, I'm super accident <laughs> prone too. So I was like, my parents were like, "You can't play an instrument because you're gonna break, you're gonna break it, and then we're gonna have to get another one, and another one, and another one." I mean, but. Joe, you can attest to this. It's like you're you're used to playing blowing into one thing and only having two knobs. To, when, <laughs> so when you add, of course, when you add the rest, it becomes <laughs> difficult. Very, very difficult. Right. And when you add buttons and things too. Oh man. <laughs> and something that collects spit. Uh, <laughs> oh. So so you're in Japan, you're eating wasabi Kit Kats. They were so good. And then and then, then what? But she was there for your friend's band? Uh yeah. I was doing uh PR for my friend's band oh. and their record label, like they were touring in Japan. So they listed me as having like several different jobs until the label would like agree to pay for me to go. So. Oh, so you, oh, you didn't have to, that's awesome. Yeah, you didn't I, have to like, pay to go. Yeah, it was like, the. it was just perfect timing. And like, because right when I discovered Wikipedia, they're like, hey, we're going on tour. I was like, I'm going with you. And I'm bringing an empty suitcase. That's a good friend. Did you bring, it, it with you bring any back? You can't bring it back, right? No, I could. Because they don't check everybody at customs. So I just like crossed my fingers. I literally brought a like 
a carry on because I, I we ISIS went, earmuffs. So, yeah, <laughs> we we went in the we went in the summer, and in the summer it's super hot and like ninety eight percent humidity there. So like you're not we, you're not wearing a ton of clothes. So like my clothes didn't take up like any room. So I had an entire empty bag just to bring candy home. Mainly Kit Kats, yeah, mostly. But they also had some other really good shit. Like yeah, they it, had these bars called like Crunchy with a K. That were also like green Makes tea flavored better. and mm. amazing. They also had weird Oreos too. What, why? How so? Like uh, they had flavors that we just like don't have here. They had like hazelnut Oreos and like lemon Oreos, but we have lemon Oreos here now. But they're the white cookie. These were the chocolate cookie. Mm. With, like, there's a lot of weird cream. like in the in those in the Asian countries. I mean, there's a lot of weird. For, they had at McDonald's like chicken feet. Chicken feet. Are like, you serious? The, the, in Taiwan. Taiwan, yeah. That's what, how were those chicken feet? Thank you. And I, they were like fried, <laughs> like fried chicken feet. Amazing. But I, I was, I was, I was hung over, and I didn't want to eat like dangling like animals that are hanging in the in the on the streets. So I uh, had a, I had a Big Mac, and it looked like the Big Mac in the commercial, like straight up. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Like perfect. Like yeah, like the, shiny. Yeah, like the yeah. sesame seeds, like placed. Like it was just like the best. And and like I bet the bun wasn't like mushy at all. No, it, was, like, yeah. it yeah, looked it was, like, like the it was yeah. like it was like everything was perfect. Was the store cleanly to, as well? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not like here, where it's gross. No, I mean. Uh, it was, oh, I'm sorry. What were the portions like in Taiwan? For what? For just like like if you got like a large fry, was it like the same as it was here? Um. Or was it smaller? I don't remember if I got. I I, I think I comboed it. So oh, I think okay, it was yeah. whatever, I, and I didn't get like super size or anything. I just yeah. got like, the regular, and uh, we were hung over, and we just needed nothing, something other than gross. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there was some stuff that was good, but yeah, they, yeah. The, did, they have stink, did they have stinky tofu in Japan? Uh, I think so. <laughs> at, and they had it at McDonald's. They also had like Jeez. the um, their chicken nuggets in the Japanese McDonald's were also made. They were made with dark meat, which really, yeah doesn't happen here. And no, they it's were not even so real good. chicken here. You know? And the portions were so much smaller. I was like, that's why these people are this size and Americans yeah, yeah. are this size. Yeah, like Super size. Happy. Like <laughs> literally a large there is a small here because the smalls here are enormous. Right. Like the small, yeah. You yeah. have to get like the kids like value size. <laughs> like, Let me ask you guys thing. this question, both of you, uh, Jess and Derek, when you guys are in Asia, mm-hmm. any redheads? Yes, in yeah. Japan, like ev- like I had the darkest hair out of like most young people there because they all dye their hair like this color. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know uh, what you mean. Like in that sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, but not like no, like I didn't. No really. I remember seeing like heads, any but... gingers walking around. <laughs> <laughs> not Does too many happen? Irish people in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, my neighbor. <laughs> I won't say his name, but Chuck Johnson's having a baby. <laughs> and he's, he's got a. He's not a ginger, but he has. A, he is Irish, yeah. and his brother's ginger. Right? So he carries that ginz gene. Oh, yeah, yeah. And his wife is Asian. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. So, They're going to have the most beautiful, exotic-looking child. Really? Because I, you really think so? I want you to Google uh, redheaded Asian right now, and wa- there's one picture will come <laughs> up. Everybody out that. there, <laughs> please pick up your phones and Google redheaded Asian, and then you then repeat what you just said to me, how beautiful I'm this starting baby to see, like, is going to be. The movie The Ring or something weird <laughs> coming up behind me. Redhead Asian. You know, the weird thing also about Japan where we're waiting for this photo to come up is they put egg on everything. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you, oh, was, uh. it, were 7 Eleven super prominent everywhere? Oh, my God, yeah. everywhere. Right? Like, there were like two on every block. <laughs> oh, God. Like, there was one on one corner and then one at the end of the. It's just weird, block. though, because, like, here we have. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's the picture. Uh-oh. That's the one. Oh, my God. <laughs> So I, t- I texted that to Chuck Johnson. And I said, I loved I, him in Planet of the Apes. I said, hi, dad. <laughs> I put that up and I said, hi, dad. That's oh, hilarious. Man. That's uh, so I, we're sitting at dinner at my house and they, we were, the neighbors just came over to eat. So it's Chuck and, and Jane. And uh, am I sharing too much? And, and uh, <laughs> so we're, at, we're just having dinner and we're having this conversation and I'm telling Jane that, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to have a, a redheaded Asian baby, right? And so I'm like laying it on, laying it on. And I, don't, I think everybody in the world has this, but maybe it's me. Don't you like when you order Chinese food? You never eat all the fortune cookies and you kind of throw them in a drawer. Yeah. Okay. Is it not just me? Mm-hmm. Just so the they're they're sitting at the uh, <laughs> sitting at the table and I went re- went to get a beer and on the way back I opened the drawer and I I've been busting the balls for about an hour about <laughs> redheaded Asians and I just reach in and I grab a leftover fortune cookie and I walk by her and I put it down in front of her and aha uh-huh, got a little laugh right she she opens the fortune cookie and you know how it always says learn to speak. 
Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think it said on the back? Redhead. Ginger. Oh my god, oh, that's amazing. No. Hey, you can't plan that, right? That's no. perfect. That's hilarious. So this episode comes out, my house gets egged. <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably. probably. All right. I always wanted to like. I found a recipe for fortune cookies, and uh, I always wanted to make them and then just fill them with like terrible things and call them like misfortune cookies. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's good. I like that. You should jump on that. Yeah, like, like. Oh God, I tested positive. Uh, what, what do I do? Oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even funny, <laughs> right? Joe, you want to share that story again about this your twenty first birthday? Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> um, so after after stand up, I guess um, what what's like what's next? I, you kind of ebb and flow, but you started a podcast, right? Or, or you're part of a podcast? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, Dave Smith, uh, he's like super libertarian, like really hardcore, uh, and he had a podcast called Part of the Problem with some other guy that I've never met and. It wasn't working, so he was. He asked around uh, to his friends. He's like, "I kind of want to get a girl on because they're probably going to be a little bit more liberal and you know whatever." Um, so his friend uh, Louis J. Gomez, if you don't say the J, he gets so fucking mad. Uh, he <laughs> recommended me, so then I came on and we just we used to record like in his apartment, and then we went to Stand Up Labs, which was nice because uh, their bathrooms are much cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nice. So do you find like it's kind of a natural progression uh, for a stand up to kind of just uh, get on the mic for a podcast and you kind of work stuff out or Um sometimes like uh the nature of a uh, part of the problem it's mostly like Dave just ranting for long periods of time then I'll just like interject. Yeah. <laughs> you tell him, you know, like uh, <laughs> word. <laughs> and like once in a while I'll like go on a tangent about abortion law. Right. Which I'm very passionate about because I hate children. So. Oh, <laughs> awesome! The Population fourth, the fourth control. thing about you that I love. <laughs> there are now four things that you are the perfect woman. <laughs> Do you have uh, any nieces or nephews? Uh, yes. Do you hate them? No. Oh, okay. Well, there's them one back, of them though. I like less than the rest. <laughs> the other but... only till the age of twelve. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's like <laughs> they're all like toddlers still, so like it's hard to hate oh, them. Oh yeah, yeah. You right. know, but it's like once they start like crossing the street by themselves, I'm just like. Get no, out. no more. No more. <laughs> Take a walk. Get rid of the crossing guards. And just let nature happen. <laughs> oh, so that podcast is part. <laughs> smart kids, we. Yeah, uh -oh. smart kids. You got to nip it in the bud um, before they become adults and ruin my day. You know. <laughs> that podcast is part of a network, right? Stand up. Uh, Labs. yeah, it's on Stand Up Labs. How do you, How do you feel about that? You think that you benefit from being on the network? Um, I you, guess. Do you care? Like I, you know? I, it's not like I never thought about it. Like it's fun. I like it. The studio is really cool. Uh, the people are super nice. So you it still is have fun. all all your freedoms, I guess. You know. What do you mean? Like I don't know. Like being does anybody control the network? Like oh, uh, not that I know of. No, like we can. We're free to like do whatever. Right on. So they're fun. I like them. I mean, so it is. It's a you know, like we always say, pizza and the beer gets you in the room. This on the show, but the show is really about the revolution. That's kind of like. A revolutionary thing, the podcast, and so, oh, definitely. some people fly alone. Some people will jump on networks. Um, you know, there's so many avenues to that it happens. Yeah, I think um, I think it's partly beneficial because just because you're affiliated with a club that has like a good reputation. So like, if your name is attached to that, they're like, oh, she probably doesn't suck as much as right. whoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's like anything else, like. Mostly merit will get you wherever you need to go. And like just sure. I, I guess knowing the right people too. That helps. But always. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That helps more than anything. Oh man. It's like, Derek, you know the right people? Trying. <laughs> Trying to know the right people. I know some of the right people. Some of them. You, you know, know me now, Derek. I do. You I know, know Joe I, I know Joe Matters. That's, that <laughs> That's right. Uh -oh. Don't you love it? Like, does it ever get old? No. Who, who makes this music? We do. P Pizza Beer Revolution. Because <laughs> I love this song. Uh, a couple of our uh, of our listeners uh, and names are escaping me right now, but I've asked me and oh damn! Now that I just I just thought about it and I apologize. They want me to upload this because they like yeah. to groove out to it. So I don't know. Should I put it on YouTube? Should I just upload it on our iTunes as an episode? I mean, it is 25 minutes long. No, I don't know. You put it on, uh, maybe we put it on our website as a download link. Can we, oh, yeah, Joe, can you funny. do that? Yeah, that sounds sharp. All right, so th <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be up uh, on our website under uh, under Gyrus. There'll be a uh, hash, it'll say hashtag Gyrus somewhere on our page. And click it, and you'll it, go there. Right, right. I like that. Yeah. So this, this music indicates uh, we're going to play a little top or bottom. 
Oh, uh, boy. Uh, it's a little game we like to play. I'm going to give you two words or two sayings. Is this that, about gay men? Well, it could be if you want it to be. <laughs> uh, it's Fine. about whatever you want it to be. It's tailored towards Jess Sager. Oh, yay. All right, so you're going to have to tell me if these two things were in a relationship, which one will be on the top and which one would be on the bottom. It, it doesn't have to be sexual. It's subjective. Again, it's tailored to you. Sounds we'll start with good. you and we'll round table it. Okay. Cool. Ready to play? Yeah. Number one, top or bottom, summer loving or walking in a winter wonderland? Oh, summer loving top. Yeah, there's yeah. not even a question on that, right? I like I'm not big on Christmas music. I love Christmas, oh. but like all the songs are the same. I love you Christmas know? music. Yeah. It's just the same people singing. It's, it's just different people. Not if it's Michael Bublé. Yeah. I fucking love him. Love him. Love him. You love should put him, him in that charm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael Bublé. I can't. I love America Bublés. too much and he's Canadian. Oh, uh, damn mm. Canadians. Jump effect. Well, definitely Winter Wonderland on top for me because summer loving happens so fast. <laughs> uh, but it's always a blast. That's beautiful. <laughs> Derek D. That was so uh, <laughs> Summer loving on top. Uh, uh, yeah, su- I mean, summer because I just. Yeah, summer loving on top, but uh, Winter Wonderland. I, I, love, I love the whole holiday season and Christmas. I love Christmas jazz. Really? Like, like, oh, that's basically all I listen to from the day after Thanksgiving till the day after Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I just love Christmas jazz. I don't even think there's a question that summer is completely on top. F the winter, <laughs> F this winter, F, F all Yeah, it. now it's like, just get out of here. You know what Please. I mean? We're seeing the light, though. Top or bottom, number two, the path train <laughs> or a red hot poker up your ass. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to have to I mean, to those are close, with, right? That is, it actually is. Like, I have to think about this. I might need a minute. Because, <laughs> oh. like, the red hot poker is like one time. The oh, path is <laughs> every day. One every time, day. but that's gonna affect you for a, with a lot of things. Sitting down. I have health insurance. I'm gonna go with the red hot poker. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, good job. Yeah, I'm gonna take the red hot poker as well for two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. I mean, I I take the path from Hoboken when I drive into the city. I usually park there and take the path, and then it's been. I I, I totally get what Jess is saying, but. I'm going to go path on top before I get a hot poker in the ass. To be fair, though. Unless ho- I poke her in the ass, not Jess. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> but Okay. Well, the Hoboken path is also different from the Jersey yeah, it's, City. It's like, it's like yeah. it's bougie. Yeah. It's the bougie path. That's where more, you have more white people in Hoboken, so we, they take better care of you. We have more blue path trains. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I take, I take it in the summer, uh, all summer long, but I take it from Newark. Oh. Uh, you want to talk about red? Uh, give me the pokers in you every stop orbit. Stop at Harris. Oh yeah. My God. Oh my God. It's like, and when you get off going home, when I go back to my car, mm-hmm. it. I, I like to describe it as uh, it's it's the Walking Dead. <laughs> it's as if you're walking through the zombie apocalypse. There are dead people walking <laughs> around yeah. Newark and just hordes brains. Yeah. Except they're saying like crack. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying like hey, any ethnicity. It could be there's white, black, Puerto Rican, yeah. Chinese, brown. like it, yeah, all of them. Yeah, but the demeanor is always the same. And the speed yeah. and the the shuffle. <laughs> yeah. You know. It's terrifying. If there's not an event in Newark, it's terrifying. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, red hot poker. Number 3, <laughs> top or bottom, Walking Dead or Breaking Bad. Oh god. Oh. I stalked your Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to I'm still going to go with uh Walking Dead for top. Because there's no Daryl Dixon on Breaking Bad. There's no Daryl Dixon I, in the comic book either. I know, but I have I actually have another locket with Daryl Dixon. It, <laughs> and there's a little crossbow. Oh, oh my god. Now now that you say like Daryl Dixon and Bill Clinton look alike. A little bit. Right? I can like see he could be a young you, Bill. Yeah. I could see it. I never noticed it until you mentioned it, but now I see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show. Oh, I'm putting Breaking Bad on top. It's probably one of the best TV shows ever made with the best ending of a TV show ever made. And Walking Dead has been mediocre at best. Well, see, it's like I never I never even seen Walking Dead, bitch. <laughs> so it's Breaking Bad on top. Mr. White. I feel like I should do Mr. <laughs> White now, yeah. but I can't do that. That was good. That was really good. I, Breaking Bad, clearly on top, man. Not, not only, and I love Walking Dead. You know, I can't wait to watch it every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but not only Breaking Bad being phenomenal, and Joy, I agree with everything you said for once. But <laughs> but Better Call Breaking Saul so is good. as good. Oh, I, I love yeah, Better I love Call Better Saul. Call Saul. Right? I mean, we can't say as good yet. Well, right now it's like Filming watching the same show. Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the the, the essence is there. Yeah. The tone. And, and I one thing I like about both uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad um, that does trump Walking Dead is like in episodes of Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad something happens in every episode. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like whereas Walking Dead, there's a lot of like waiting and 
set up, but you don't get the payoff right away. Yeah, yep. there is, but isn't the zombie apocalypse all about the human interaction and the way people deal with it? Oh, no, absolutely. Right, and I think but, that's what's happening, but I do agree with you. Yeah, too. but there were, there were a couple episodes, like, uh, the, the one where, like, Carol had the flashbacks of just being by herself. I was like, so everything that happened to her was what we expected to have happened. To have happened to her. Yeah, well, I yeah. didn't need to see this. Uh, are you guys all caught yeah. up in Better Call Saul? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All four episodes. I actually episodes? <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen the the most recent. Oh, one it's yet. really it's all about Mike. It's great. Yeah, it's just good. I love his. If character. you love it, you got to check out the Angry Ginger Seven Days of Geek podcast. Uh, Jason Pearson, um, he has a, a companion podcast called. Uh, Better Call Saul Companion Podcast, <laughs> but it's awesome. You should check That's it really out. That's really cool. Yeah. Nice. You should. He has guests on all the time, and if you are a fan, you should definitely go on. That would be fun. I'll, I'll, I'll set that up. Doesn't it piss you off though how Mike was done in Breaking Bad when you're watching him in Better Call Saul? Yeah. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Really get pissed. Yeah. What a great character. What? How he so dies? Good. You're saying his how he eyes dies? are always droopy and he's always. I love him. Off. What I want to know is Bill Burr gonna make? Is he gonna be on? Yeah. Oh, let's hope. Right? Oh, and that, and that, that big black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was yeah. his name? He's uh, a comedian. LaBelle. That guy. Yeah, but in the show, he was. Uh, oh, I forget his name in the Damn, show. Damn, what was his name? I forget. I know you're talking about that. Bill I, Burr picked up by Netflix. New show. Wait, did it get? Did it get he's, launched? He's no. He's getting a brand new show of his own. He yeah, he's got three. Oh, he's nice. got three hysterical. shows out right now, yeah. and he's in Zombieverse. Yeah, he's hysterical. Just saying. Top or bottom? In terms of comedy, Ooh. who's on top? Who's on bottom? Blondes or brunettes? Ooh, I don't know. I'm, try I'm trying to think of like, I'd say like gingers because like Bill Burr and Louis C.K. Oh, wow, man. She just threw a curveball. That's good, too, because I didn't even think about that. Gingers huh. are. Yeah. But Carrot Top's in that category then. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, but you know what? He's a good he, prop comic. Carrot Top, even though he you know looks what? like an alien, he's, he's pretty funny. And he's making he's some serious bank. Oh, yeah. Listen, you know? I got to be I honest. I can't even hate on him. I saw him in Vegas, and it was one of the best shows I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's all like, <laughs> but you know, I I'm gonna go with gingers for this one. Wow. Okay. I'll allow it. I'll Curveball. allow it. Curveball throwing, but Joe Mafay. Let's ginger swung. it all around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want to ginger it all around? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I don't know why. I just automatically thought that. I thought because we because we had a female guest. I thought we were thinking female comics. Oh, okay. Um, Which would make her her answer null and void. <laughs> Yeah, what ginger? I don't, I don't uh, know. I, I, I don't know. I was thinking. I was like, I was like, what blonde chick comic? I mean, you got Lucy Chelsea Handler. You got like, uh, I guess Jenny McCarthy. Amy, Sh Amy, Amy Schumer. Schumer. Amy Schumer. Right. Like all the. But like, I feel I still want to go brunette. Like Tina like, Fey. Like, like Tina Fey. Mm. Or what was Lindsay Co Co the Co Coplet? Coplet. Lynn Coplet. Lynn Coplet. Well, she's, she's been. Funny. She's actually had like blonde. She's probably hair been too. both. She's been both. She used so to be a smoke sell. show. I don't know if she is anymore. She's still, still gorgeous. She is still hot. Yeah, she's so pretty. I love her. We got our headshots done by the same photographer. I met her once. Mm -hmm. She's really sweet too. Name yeah. I like her yeah. a lot. So I don't know then. They're okay. both good. <laughs> as long as they're funny. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take them both. I like when she calls herself Auntie Lynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. She's there, she was on the, I don't know if they're still the Jenny McCarthy tour. It was like her and a couple other. Yeah. yeah. This next, uh, last one's a menage a trois. Ooh. All right. Uh, podcasting, stand up comedy, or sitcom? Stand up, I think. Because the payoff is more immediate. That's what a lot of comedians say, man. You really love that immediate reaction. It's, all, yeah. it's like a drug, it could go either way. <laughs> yeah, it's a well, great reaction or yeah. no reaction. Well, yeah, because really then hurts. like you immediately know what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas like with a sitcom, you have to wait for numbers to come in. Yeah, and same with podcasts. Like you have to wait and and do editing and uploading. Like with stand up, you just go up there and you talk for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And if they hate you, you just go drink <laughs> until <laughs> you feel better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure, Joe. Oh, I'm definitely putting podcasting on top. I guess you have to by default, right? Exactly. Uh, After that, who cares? I mean, sitcom, stand-up, I don't do either. Oh, um, man. Um, I love doing stand-up, uh, but I don't know, sitcom, I mean, that's like, hey, you made it. Uh, but then you could just be, you know, crash and burn. But, like, there is really nothing like when you're up there and you get that big laugh and you got the audience right here in yeah. your hand. So I go, I guess stand-up sitcom podcast. All right. I know, no offense You put us on man, man, that hurt. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've never done stand-up, but I've done plenty of live, man, and live is, is terrifying. It really is. But uh, it's also exhilarating. It is. Yeah. It's both, man. And, you know, you miss a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's dangerous. So, I don't know. I'd say podcasting, stand-up, sitcom, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, because so, the thing is, we too, agreed with, again. Like, with, <laughs> with, uh, with podcasting and sitcoms, you have more control, which is nice, too. Yeah. Like, with, with stand-up, like, you can't control, like, you can 
command a room, but you can't control a room. Right, you never know you what's going to walk through that door. Oh, yeah. And that asshole the over there. And there's, there have been some very horrifying things. And depending know. on the room, like I just did that benefit uh, and, you know, like that, it was basically to, like doing stand up at a wedding reception. It was just, it, it's t- tough. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Because yeah, they're not there. Tables to see in the you. back. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's no stage. It's all lit. Like, oh, lit. yeah, that's awkward. Yeah. Like, sometimes people don't even know where to look. Like, yeah. they hear a voice, but, like, right. you know what I mean? It's, yeah. 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 So it's, it's all like, there's different rooms and it's, 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 it's tough. So we talked. We talked about your your uh, your stand up, right? We talked about a little bit of, of your podcasting. Let's talk about the sitcom. You just shot a pilot, right? Oh, um, I helped out with uh, Nori Davis. Shot mm-hmm. a pilot for Comedy Central uh, mm-hmm. called In Between with Nori Davis, and uh, I was a token, okay, white girl. Yeah. For cool. One there scene, you go. So nice. Pretty fun. Uh, I got to eat chicken. <laughs> Not the chicken and that hopefully Derek saw hanging from the Japanese. <laughs> it was more than chickens. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. He is so fucking great. I love Nori. He's the best. Yeah. So wait, you you uh so you've been you've writing as well like for writing with that show or other shows or um, you just write you just said you're writing the shit out of stuff. Uh, I submitted for that. I've I actually write for the New York Post as like my day job, okay. and then I do some freelancing on the side. Do you, do you throw do you throw your comedic flair into those post writings? I try, but sometimes they like uh, I have to be careful what I say uh, in case they listen to it. But uh, <laughs> there are certain staffers where like the stuff just goes over their heads. Um, there was one like I was making like a photo gallery for them one day, and it was like celebrities and who they supported in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and uh, Chris Evans who. Plays Captain, Captain America, America yeah. rooted for the Patriots. So all I wrote was, of course, Chris Evans, who is Captain America, is supporting the Patriots. And like, the editor was like, is this like a sports reference I don't get? And I was like, no, it's English. That's all, the, literally all it is. <laughs> it's, it's English. <laughs> it's, right, right. <laughs> you know, like, there's, yeah. there's nothing to get. Like, it's right there. You're, it's like, yeah. It's it, written. Yeah. It's like, it's the kind of thing where like, it was so dumb. That I actually questioned myself, and I e- I'm like buddies with like the sports editor, so I emailed him. I was like, "Did I put something in here that I don't missed? even?" <laughs> yeah, and he was like, "No, no." <laughs> right. like, so, <laughs> don't you hate when you you have to explain your comedy? Mm-hmm. Like, like, how do you view that? How do you if if you have to explain your comedy? Do you, are you like you know what? If you it, the, you can't make your comedy based on other people being dumb. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Do you look at it that way, or maybe it's not. Maybe um, it's not funny. No, like never compromise. Just do your thing. Just yeah, do like, your thing. I, I just kind of I write stuff like I write. I try to write for someone like me, you know. So something that somebody like me would laugh at. I tend to go for like very dry, very dark. Like like if it makes you a bad person, I probably think it's hilarious. Good, you know. So. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, everything is subjective. It's not for everybody. Um, I had, like, some girl yell at me once because I made what she thought was a Holocaust joke, but it, like, she it just meant she missed the point of the rest of the bit. Um, it was like a... I don't even do this one on stage that much anymore, so I'll just do it here. But it was like a... It was about the, uh, the feminist argument, like, how women make 77 cents to every dollar. And I was like... Uh, I was like, well, you know, historically speaking... Men have accomplished a lot more than we have. And I was just like, you know, like in sports, men had like Michael Jordan. We had nappy-headed hoes and like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then like World War II, like men had Hitler. We had Anne Frank. Like you've earned the extra 23, you know. Yeah. You got more done. And uh, she like flipped out and she was like, Anne Frank has a museum. And I was like, so does Hiroshima. Like oh, what yeah. is your point? I was like, so will you if you don't stop speaking during my set. And didn't you uh, remember that door you walked into into a comedy club? Yeah, it was like... Comedy? It was really funny because a guy came up to me after that show who knew her, apparently, and he was like... I know that girl. She didn't graduate high school. And I was like... That's why she's yelling. Oh, okay. Mm, Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Oh, man. You know, but like, like, the point of the bit isn't like... Like, there's shock value there, but the point is basically it's just, like, the absurdity of that, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, no. like, and... 
you know, so not everyone is going to laugh at stuff for the same reasons, and some people just aren't going to laugh, but it is what it is. Because they're know. assholes. Yeah. <laughs> how, well, do you, how do you deal with it, D? Well, I mean, if they're being an asshole in the sense of, like, they're heckling you, then you deal with it that way, or you just... You just you just move along. If people don't laugh, they don't laugh. You make it maybe you make a joke about that not being funny, and that yeah. becomes a joke. And you know you, you you can't clam up. You can't. The minute you get frustrated with the audience, is the minute you lose them. Yeah, so it's like it's like, a sh- it's like when sharks smell blood. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like then they're gonna pounce. But like you have to just like if you can poke fun at yourself, then they'll Boom. they'll be on your side. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you get it. You like, get, oh, guys, that was polarizing, and then you yeah. just move along. Yeah. yeah, but you guys have no respect for the heckler though at all. <laughs> Like, there are hecklers that I've seen that have done it well and almost have taken over, you know, and gotten more laughs than the person that's, on stage. That's terrible. You know, and there are the, he- the, there's hecklers the out there that are, are, are very clever, too, when they s- make some comments. Then they should do stand-up then themselves they should, yeah. and not interrupt other people. Oh, you don't but, think there's there's joy in trolling? No, it's just, it's disrespectful, I think, to everybody else who paid to be there and listen to the person on stage. Yeah, I get that. You know? I think one um, time I, I, I held up the mic and I was like, sir, sir, you think you do this better? Why don't you just come grab this from me? No, 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 I'm good. And I, I forget what I said, something about like his like wife or something. And then got like a big ladder. Like, I was like, yeah, that's why like she has your balls in her beer purse right now or something like that. Right. You have to have something locked and loaded for that moment. Kind of right? yeah. something, yeah. You got to always send me yeah, something on the back burner. I actually got heckled by another comic once. This was the second time I was ever on a stage. It was like the most horrifying thing <laughs> yeah. I've ever witnessed. It was like, a, I'm not going to say the guy's name because I don't like want him to get attention for this, but, um, the, it was this dude, it was his first time ever doing stand-up, and it was at an open mic at the Stress Factory, and he uh, he came in, he had brought, like, a, a bunch of people, like, I guess half the audience were, like, friends with him. Yeah, that doesn't count. Well, no, no, I no. I mean, it counts, like, but, like... Well, he was he was awful. Like, he went up, and his whole thing was about him being a self-proclaimed Jewish juice head, and he was, like, orange and... Like hulked out, like and Jersey crazy. Shore type guy. Was his yeah. friends like laughing at him though? Uh they were like, people were laughing, but it was like they were nervous because he was just up there like screaming, and all he was yelling was like "bust a nut" the whole for like five minutes. <laughs> it was insane, and then same material. You guys just left. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's coming from her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like if you just walked that stage and said nothing and just go bust a nut, like the that's God, not yeah. it's, it's it's all about context, I guess. You but walk that stage you're like, hey, I'm here just trying to bust a nut. Like yeah. coming from you, that'd be hysterical. Yeah, coming from me, that would just be like strange. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, but uh, <laughs> so then I had to follow this dude and like. The room was just so awkward Oof. at that point, and the MC was trying to like bring it back uh, up. Yeah, he was like, he was like, oh, and oddly enough, following the most sexist thing I've ever seen is our only female comic of the night, and I was like, this is gonna be so difficult. <laughs> oh yeah. So I went up, and um, the guy, like, when I started walking up, the guy was like hooting and hollering and like just going crazy. Was he drunk? Was he like his first time? So he's had a bunch of drinks and he's an I, asshole. I, I think he was just crazy because like. I went up and he's like screaming. So I get up there and I was like, I do have a vagina. Thank you for noticing. Um, and the guy like started yelling again. And I was like, you must not see them that often if you're this excited. <laughs> oh, well done. Oh. And then he got really angry. Um, <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, I'm going to rape you. And oh. I was just like, I was like, I already have Jew in me. I don't need any extra. So then oh. <laughs> Zay flips out more because I'm like, yeah, but not... they, they had to be laughing at you. The crowd had to be no, cr- they cracking were, up. Yeah, they saying. like they liked me. Yeah. I was just, I thought he was just like fucking around. So I was yeah. just like giving it back to him. But like after a while, I just wanted to like tell jokes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, but like he got so mad. And he was like, he was like, I'm going to rape you. You need to lose 10 pounds. And I was like, oh, good. Planned Parenthood has punch cards now. I'll sell both at once. And it, was just like, <laughs> it was so bad. And the guy was like huge. And then he actually started like coming towards the stage. So like um, there were, I'm trying to think, there was like three big dudes there that night. It was uh, my friend Frank, my friend Damon, who was emceeing and then uh, this guy, Andy. So it was three of them. And then the manager of the place, Mark, had to, like, carry the guy out because he was just, like, insane. He was, like, an insane person. <laughs> what an ass. And he was yeah. there with his girlfriend. And I felt so sorry for her. I mean, he's I felt clearly so sorry for her. juiced out, right? Just, his, yeah, just Roy raging mind. over a cop. Uh, yeah, I was, like, I was like, this is what happens when you make your nuts look like raisins. Uh, you know, like, you just, like, <laughs> it's not. Right, Joe? What? What? <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I was wondering why she, you were you were heckling her at that comedy show. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe in 1987. So, I, like I said before, I, I stalked your Twitter a little bit. Uh oh. Play a little game called rehashing your hashtag. <laughs> I want to read you a tweet that you posted. I want you to meet, I want you to tell us what the hell were you thinking? Oh God, I don't even. I do a lot of drunk tweeting. So yeah, I, I know. Be. I know. <laughs> we're about to share it with the world. You ready? Did first, I? Here's the first one. Oh, God. Okay. You re- are you ready for this? Yeah. You look nervous. <laughs> I am. I, I, I do a lot of drunk tweeting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't remember some of the stuff until, like, people at reply me, and they're like, is this English? You're you're apparently, like, drunk in the middle of the day, too, because on March 11th at <laughs> 3.22 p.m., you said it's so annoying when people blame women for, women for being bitchy and PMS. Like, why can't I just be a horrible person? I am a horrible person. Like, it's not a hormonal issue. I'm just not nice. <laughs> Hence the air conditioning car. Like yes. all all four weeks of the month are the same. <laughs> <laughs> no Holy one shit. ever notices. Mike, it's not too late. Uber, buddy. Uber. <laughs> <laughs> um, March 10th, 2.05 p.m., 2015. These the, are all while I'm at work. This is amazing. The at path train is the transportation equivalent of my sister-in-law. The worst ever but convincing people they don't have other options. My poor brother. Oh. My poor brother. She is the worst, though. Oh, I know man. she's not going to listen to this because she doesn't like me. Leave, leave us her email. And she has no sense of humor. <laughs> so, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 923. So far, we've been pretty good with you, right? Like, I didn't You're go too wonderful. Deep. Yeah, I didn't go too deep into your late night drunken tweets. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, because like my dr- even my drunk tweets aren't that late because I'm like an old woman and I get exhausted at 11 o'clock and go to sleep. Oh, so maybe this one is you being it, drunk it, at 8.18 it, it, p.m. on February 1st, 2015. It very well could be. I wanted to have sex with Lenny Kravitz since before I knew what sex was. Also, autocorrecting thinks his name is Lemony Racist. That's true. <laughs> it really did. F- it autocorrected for that. And Lemony also, racist. I have one that's had sex with Lenny Kravitz forever. Really? You know, he's like four feet tall. Is he real? Well, I'm yeah, short. Yeah. I'm only five foot. He's not that. Yeah. Sk- I mean, obviously he's not four foot, but he's not, he's not like he's about your height for real. <laughs> all right, I mean, I'm one inch shorter than you, Mike. It's like, dude, I am <laughs> six feet tall. <laughs> yeah, six feet tall. What is wrong with you? I'm Wait, like barely five foot though. Like they wrote that on my license, so I would feel good. But <laughs> I think I'm actually like four eleven. My question is: more. Is the lemony races? They only come in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they sound delicious. 9.23 p.m. on March 8th, 2015. Fuck Carl and his bangs. Hashtag walking dead. <laughs> I, like, they, they're they getting free haircuts, and that's what he picks. <laughs> Why, you think he has yeah. a choice? Yes. She no. the hair. And She's that. a hairstylist. She didn't, give, she didn't give Rick that shitty haircut. No. What are you talking about? Kiss. Wait, we're talking about Carl and the walking dead. Yeah. yeah. Who cut his hair? When they got to the new town. When they Arlington? got to Alexandria, yeah. Jesse was giving people haircuts. Oh, okay. I was, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like cutting haircuts, yo. It's like, All day, Mr. White. It's like his bangs were straight and the rest of his hair was curly and it just what made do you mean, me What angry. do you mean straight? Define straight. Like his hair was. Oh, okay. Not like, not like straight, like heterosexual, but like straight, like, you know. Geometry. I hope he gets shot right in the eye. I can't stand right? him. I maybe that's why he got. Maybe he chose bangs, foreshadowing the fact that he was going to get yeah. shot in the eye, and he could beaver that shit out. <laughs> right? That is brilliant. You're right. Well, it, it'll I save have my like moments. the makeup department so much work too. That's so great. Five twenty-eight p.m. September twenty-third, twenty fourteen. Oh wow! That was- Someone proved to me that the PATH train isn't run by ISIS. <laughs> oh, no one has God. been able to do it yet. <laughs> no. They, they clearly hate Americans. <laughs> the path train? Yes. <laughs> Always scaring uh, us. What's up with this? Uh, when you're Catching sitting on the, you're on the path train, it's like, next time on the path train, it's safe, it's safe, safe, safe. I was just about to say that. <laughs> what is that all about, man? God forbid for people that like are just coming to visit and going to the city, they have no clue where they're stopped. Like, we know oh, yeah. where we're going. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's, a, it's like, catch <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to be the path train conductor, okay. and I want you to be Jesse Pinkman. Okay, you're not from New York City. You're from you're from New Mexico, yeah. but you're in New York City, and you're going to see Jess Sager. Yeah. All right, and sorry, you ready? No, stop, Jess Sager. Matter what? What? Yo, yo, it's like it's like hold up, yo. I can't even understand. I'm trying. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> Mr. White's not on the train. Bong bong. <laughs> it's like. Do it, 
trying to go to a comedy show, bitch. <laughs> it's like, where am I going, yo? How do you know? I'm in Jer Jersey City. That, that's a really that good. Really you good. get one, one or two more catchphrases in there, and it's it's nailed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Figured out. That was really good. <laughs> so you win rehashing your hashtag. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, you're the first winner ever. That was good. That's not true. I lied about that. Everybody <laughs> Wait, wins. How, how do you, I was no gonna points. say. I didn't you just win. You just win. Yeah. Everybody wins. You're a winner. We're that's all like big winners here. It's like yeah, <laughs> you get a meatball served up, and and you know you tee it off. <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it is. That was fun. Two questions. When is the last time you heard this, and what does it mean to you? Oh, wow. Then we get to the dubstep part. I'm trying to... <laughs> I think I was in, I like, like... I think I was in, like, sixth grade. <laughs> I think I was in sixth grade. And I was like... I remember having a crush on this kid in my class and wanting to go on, like, AOL Instant Messenger. And talking <laughs> to him. Oh, that's great, because we, we just talked about that. What was your screen name? I my first one like my like older brother made it for me. It was just like J nineteen SS. So, but then like after that, for some reason, I did like I was super stapler five thousand. <laughs> wow, that's such a good one. It's like so randomly awesome. Yeah, <laughs> super like, stapler. Because I was like, no one will find me unless they really know. <laughs> you know. True. True or false. You meet Mike in a bar. You guys lock eyes. He come over. He comes over. He notices your necklace. Whatever, <laughs> right? What's up, you Super Stapler? You don't. What's up? <laughs> you don't exchange phone numbers. You exchange emails. <laughs> All right. The extension at the end of his email is at aol.com. What do you do? I don't think I would judge him for it because a lot of people have like Bullshit. forwarding and shit set no, up. No, you're <laughs> like, lying right to it. Just Ameri goes to a Gmail to America. You're lying. No, like I would think it was like weird, but I wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me. You know. Like you wouldn't, wouldn't even you me. wouldn't bat an eye. Not really, because like I I know a lot of people actually who like still they keep the extension, but it goes somewhere else. That's yeah, what Joe so. says Joe says it's like a cool thing. It's like hip. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Nerds like it. Yeah. Can you still get an a like? Can you yeah. sign up right now and get an AOL so. account? No, you can't get you a can't? new AOL account. I don't think you can get a new one, but you can if you had one before. You can, you keep can it. still use it. Yeah, it oh. still operates. Yep. Where? Yeah. Where? I still have my original uh, Comcast one. Comcast used to have at home as the, the symbol. <laughs> oh, so wow. My first email address was stupid fat guy at home. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, my God. I don't know. I just don't get it. So when's the last time you heard? You said sixth grade was I the last was time you like heard that? I think it was sixth grade. Dial up, Brings yeah. back crazy memories, those chat rooms. Oh, God. Oh, God. That was like. Those, they were so weird. Age, sex, location check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anyone remember? Am I the only person who, who remembers Slingo? Does anyone remember that no. game? It was like. Uh, yeah, vaguely. It was like bingo and like some mixed with something else. I don't remember. But there was like a chat room in it. And like people would always try talking to me. And I was like, guys, I'm just trying to pull the game. <laughs> yeah. I can't focus on the game. What's your ASL though? Yeah. Short I would always that. lie. <laughs> like I would try to make myself unappealing, like both to pedophiles and like normal people. <laughs> I was like fifty three male, <laughs> Staten Island. <laughs> oh, that's great. So the year's twenty fifty. Armchair futurists. What? Right, Ooh. you're sitting back in that chair. It's twenty fifty. You're chilling. What is your industry? The comedic industry, I guess. Right. What's it look like in twenty fifty? Oh God. Um... At this rate, uh, like if Salon.com remains successful, comedy will be dead. <laughs> so I may not have a future. Uh, we have to see. We have to see. All right. That's, Joe, you, you, you think comedy is dead in, after 2048, after the cat genocide? I don't know. I think like we've talked about, like it's going to be in your home. You can be able to see a show right from your home yeah. and be in the audience and see it from the perspective of the person. There was a whole news article on CNET this week about how they're trying to put cameras on everybody. So like when you go to a comedy show in the future, you'll be able to pull up their perspective and be the comedian Duh. as well as watch the show and all that. No, no. Why not? No, no. Jesse, tell me no. how you Jesse, tell me how you really feel about comedy in 2015. <laughs> it's like I'm not even laughing, bitch. It's like not even funny, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jess, thank you so much for coming out, man. Thank We're, you for having me. This uh, is so much fun. Uh, we had a great time. On the way out, is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, you can listen to Part of the Problem uh, on Stand Up New York Labs and it comes out every Monday. Pizza. So we record on Sundays. Here. And uh, Dave is always angry. I'm <laughs> always tired or taking 
cough medicine. Nice. So it's a good time. <laughs> Joe Buffet. Uh, Gianna, Gianna G-Star at Gianna Stino. Magnavot's Odyssey. We played KC Munchkin at the same time in our lives. I don't know what that means. <laughs> no idea what he's talking Dad, about. Derek D. I don't know um, what any of that means, but some uh, <laughs> someone does. Um, d- DerekD.com. You can go check it out. All my demo reels are on there if you want to see those commercials from Taiwan. PizzaBeerRevolution.com. You can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give us some love, and we'll love you back, and we'll see you on the flip side. See you.